Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Public Sector Summit 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Washington, D.C. for theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Amazon Web Services Public Sector Summit. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. It's a huge show, it's like the reinvent for public sector, and it's really booming. We've got CUBE alumni on, Josh Stella, CEO of Fugue, and uh, Peter O'Donoghue, Vice President of uh, Service, Application Services at Unisys. Um, you guys back for the third time. We first interviewed you guys last year here, and then at reinvent as well. Good to see you back, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for, thanks for having thanks, us back yeah. on. It's great. So, I love to connect the dots, it's almost like the trajectory. And we were talking yesterday about cloud and how Amazon and other cloud players, and Stu brought up a term called, you know, having the experience. And then we were talking about diseconomies with scale. And this is really where you're starting to, people, people who have done it over time have, have got the requisite experience, scar tissue and learnings. Some jump to try to deliver everything at once. You guys have been together for a while, working together. What's the update uh, on the trajectory as you guys go cloud first? What's the status, what's going on? You guys made an announcement sure. this week, right? Yeah, so. yeah, so um, yeah, we at Unisys are, are super, uh, super excited to announce our, our new cloud offering called uh, Cloud Forte. Um, and and it, your, your point about like, le taking the lessons from, from experience and, and really embedding those into a capability, um, and, and that's really what Cloud Forte is about. Um, I think, you know, at a very high level, um, Cloud Forte has is, is got two major kind of sets of capabilities. One is, one is like subscription services, which is around you know, management and governance of AWS. And actually we've designed it to solve like really tricky problems that our public sector and frankly our commercial uh, clients are really struggling with. And the second set of services are really professional services that allow for and they facilitate and catalyze adoption at scale. And actually they go you know, head on addressing some of the trickiest problems in that space as well. Well take a minute to just explain what does the product do? What's the value proposition of this new service? Okay. Um, well at the, at, the, uh, at the management and governance here, um, it's, let me tell you what the problems that it solves. I can go into all the minutia, but I think we could be here a while, right? <laughs> it solves some big problems. Problem one that it solves is, is um, you know, commercially, public sector, and actually federal, federal wise, um, organizations have a tough time managing the finances of, of AWS cloud consumption, actually having the transparency and visibility, and being able to th you know, uh, comply with uh, the Anti-Deficiency Act, being able to manage funding, and also being able to tie it back to contracts and contract line items. Sounds trivial enough, but it's, it's really a thorn in the side of a lot of folks yeah. really trying to adopt cloud. Um, and I would say the second, the second element is, is uh, what we're calling our, um, our command bundle. And the command bundle really kind of, it, it deliberately kind of solves the, uh, it fills the gap of, of the shared responsibility model. I think we all probably are deeply aware of what that means, but that's really the kind of the air gap, if you will, between what AWS is, it supports out of the box, and frankly what customers need to support. So things like, classic things like service catalog management, you know, uh, patch management, uh, backup and recovery, IT operations, incident management, asset management, all those things. We've, we've built and we've constructed basically you know, a, um, a flexible framework, a lightweight framework that allows folks to, do, to go fast, but also um, you know, has that enterprise level of governance that people expect to see from the cloud. And one of the key, the key elements of our command bundle is, is what Josh's organization provides, is, is the, the few policy engine. So we find that in order to provide cloud, it's really important to be able to have those guardrails, to provide basically a nanny-like supervisor to make sure that, that what's deployed is compliant and actually what's deployed and what's running in production actually stays compliant with security policy. So that's really what command is all about. Josh, talk about what's under the hood. We, we've had a lot of conversations around policy and automation. Okay, it's third year in to yep. our conversations. What's going on under the hood? What's happening with the things that you guys are doing with Unisys? Yeah, so uh, when we last talked, uh, they hadn't announced this yet, so we couldn't quite explain <laughs> what we were working on together. But uh, we're working with Unisys and, and other organizations to provide that full uh, automation of the entire infrastructure layer. And it's just, uh, it's fire and forget infrastructure on cloud. And so one of the things we're seeing consistently is people are, are really starting to struggle. The market's really maturing around the need to fully automate remediation of problems, detection and remediation, where the old model of 
uh, you know, used a monitoring solution, throws a ticket over the wall, yeah. uh, search through the pile of tickets. You might have hours, days, weeks where you're exposed and your data leaks, and Fugue fixes that in under a minute. Yeah. So that's what we've been working on together, and we love the partnership because Unisys has the experience and the engagement on the federal side of the market, and Fugue is baked in to just uh, provide all that, that What's goodness. What's the impact of that? Because so, I mean, you compared kind of the old way to the, the new way that you guys are doing. Just kind of give some you know, categorical or anecdotal color behind what the impact is from that, <laughs> what's, sure, it, what's it do? Saves I'll, people's lives, I mean, saves time, money? What's the, what's the impact? Well, yeah, I'll tell you the impact and I'll describe a use case. So we're working uh, with uh, another customer and they came to us and said, uh, in our hosted environments on AWS, we have over 500 events a day where configuration has drifted. And every one of those, we have to investigate, we have to come up with a plan, then we have to execute the plan, then we have to write a report on how it will never happen again, 500 a day. Uh, so with Fugue, every one of those just is automatically fixed and reported within about 30 seconds to a minute. So the impact of this is a team of three completely overwhelmed folks yeah. who were looking to hire 10 people to try to, be, as their cloud presence grew, they just had to staff a larger and larger you know, cloud services desk, yeah. uh, actually, the three people they have are now on to doing other work right. because it's just automated. Right. Yeah. So, awesome. Peter, you, you know, help connect the dots for us for, for uh, the, your customers on the federal side because we know there's been pushback customers sometimes. Oh, well, automation, automation sounds great, but oh wait, on the government side, I've got regulations, I've got processes, I've got you know hurdles that we might need to do. So, so how do we get get beyond those? Well, I think that's a great question, right? I would say that um, as you so. As I was talking about the Cloud Forte offering set, there's, there's a set of offerings in the professional services domain too. We actually have um, an, our Accelerate bundle, right? Um, and actually one of the things that we, you know, we really believe is important as folks adopt cloud is, in order to, to leverage cloud most effectively, you really need a mind shift, right? So we have like two, two of the legs of our, of our offerings are, are around the org change management and kind of making that major transformation for human capital. And actually what really good looks like is, is folks who actually think cloud natively, right? So we find the most successful clients are folks who've, who've kind of made that leap, right? The, the other kind of dimension is, is around process and process change. And we see, you know, we see ITIL has been super effective and, and has been kind of a stalwart of enterprise IT for a long time. Uh, but we, we see that as folks move to the cloud and one of the strong recommendations we make and we have process offerings is, is how do we renew my management, management and governance processes to actually embrace more DevOps thinking and to embrace more everything as code thinking, including policy. Um, because what we find is, as I think you're hinting at, right, is, is as, as it, folks move to the cloud, you can kind of have like almost a, a Goldilocks scenario, right, where like on one hand, I've taken the really heavyweight processes um, and tools from my data center and my thinking, and I've got now kind of a, a Porsche 911 but I've put donut wheels on it and I can't move very quickly and I'm, I'm kind of frustrated with it, right? Yeah. And the other extreme, I've got like the, the SharePoint era of 2005, 2006 where it is the Wild West, it's pandemonium and God only knows what's going on out right there. So what we're trying to do is, is really looking for effective enterprise you know, and, and having transparent governance, um, making sure that the great lessons learned of before are there but we have like a lightweight, extensible framework, and we have the nanny guardrails on it so that we can understand where, where there's policy drifts. Yeah, and, and the beauty of this is, you know, the APIs give us and the APIs taketh away. You know, the APIs <laughs> are why we can go so fast, but it's also why it's really easy to hurt yourself. Yeah. That's what Fugue is there for. We let you go just as fast, and we can show that all those processes, like in ITIL having a CMDB, that's a side effect of running Fugue. It, you can query Fugue and you've got your configuration so data. How you make them go fast, I get that, but how do you protect from breaking? What's, you, that's, what's the other half? Yeah, sure, so the, the Fugue approach, and, and Unisys are doing some other things on top of this, but, uh, but the Fugue approach is, you cannot deploy something unless it is both correct and meets policy and compliance. So, uh, that's the guardrails you're talking about. That's the guardrails. Yep. And unlike anything else, Fugue tells you exactly how you got it wrong, why, and how to fix it. So it's not just a, a, a big no at the end of the process. It's, hey, on line 47, yeah. you're not allowed to have unencrypted volumes, so change that. 
uh, then once the infrastructure is provisioned, so it must be correct up front, uh, once it's provisioned, Fugue will never let it drift again. So again, within 30 seconds to a minute, we've seen anything that's changed, we fix it. And, and what that means is... It is. You bring intelligence to it, you should fix it. And again, this is, the, the, this is why I love the automation, the whole cloud thing. You know, the the non-believers don't understand the value of this. I, mean, I call them the cloud non-believers because this is just game changing. You mentioned the, 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 the point about the efficiency of people not having to bulk up manual labor to lock down and, and, just, a, and just opens up so many security holes. Um, Peter, I got to ask you, I put you on the spot here. What's it like now working with Few? You guys done a lot of work together. Um, what's the outcomes? Tell us about the experience and, and what is about their solution that really helps you out? Okay, sure. Um, well, I mean, I think, I think you know, the, the, the most obvious you know, response there is, is um, the fact that we've baked it in. It's part of the, act, it's part of the solution. It's one of the core tenets and, and components within our command bundle. Uh, that of itself is, is, a, is a major you know, part of our strategy. What we're finding our customers, you know, we do find Clients actually, you know, kind of, they kind of range in where they are in terms of uh, their cloud adoption. And we're also finding with our Cloud Forte bundle, folks actually will adopt different parts of it at different times. But actually we do find uh, clients are, are very interested. Actually, the, I think our best clients are folks who, who actually have, have been playing with CICD and they've been playing with, with cloud, but they've actually kind of, they started to see that the sprawl, the sprawl effect is actually starting to happen. And they're looking to have speed, but also security at the same time. And we find that the integration of Fugue, um, and that just, that kind of that insane cloud native thinking, yeah. um, and this kind of like, this ability to speak AWS natively as a native language, yeah. um, is a really important differentiator when we, when we bring a joint solution to our I clients. I mean, the scale piece is great. Josh, I want to give you the final word on your business. Give us the update on your business. What's going on? Um, what's the value proposition look like now? Obviously automation, we're believers, we just, Kind of yeah, talked yeah. about that, but where's it go next? What's up? What's up for Fugue? Sure. So what's up for Fugue? All kinds of things uh, over the next quarter or two that we'll be releasing uh, that I can't quite talk about <laughs> yet, or my product lead will kill me. Uh, but one of the things we've put a ton of work into is around uh, uh, pre-building libraries of policy for our customers. So uh, NIST 800-53 for federal. We've implemented a lot of that as policy now. PCI, HIPAA. Uh, all kinds of standards so that when they uh, purchase Fugue, they just get these out of the box. And it, it's amazing to watch somebody who's been on cloud for a little while uh, bring up the Fugue Composer or Visualization Engine, go discover all their infrastructure, and then do import HIPAA and find all the little red dots of where uh, they're actually have been running wrong, fix it all in less than an hour and then not worry about it again. So we're doing a lot of business in, in federal, we're doing a lot of business with partners, and we're uh, also doing a lot of business in, in commercial now, mostly on the larger enterprise side. The value prop is really around that uh, controlling sprawl over time and uh, uh, automated remediation. There's lots of kinds of automation that are partial. Unless the system, like Fugue does, can fix everything, if there are any gaps in that, yeah. you're back to manual world. Yeah. So it, there's, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of binary scenario. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> You kind of never give it up unless you can fully let go of it. That's right, that's right. Awesome, yeah. well congratulations on the partnership. You want to add? Yeah, can I, can I pull yeah. a string on that though? Yeah. I mean, I think this is, this is another great like, concrete example of why we like working with Fugue is, is, is part of our business obviously is, is, I mean, I would say one of the major blockers getting folks to the cloud is, is what do we do, what do we do with ATOs that folks already have and how do I bring those security accreditations into the cloud? So if you think of you know, where, where I think the industry is going to go next, is, is automation frameworks that allow me to quickly figure out what I inherit, what controls are, are balance I need to address as I move to the cloud. But the fact that you know, Fugue is looking at natively kind of having as a primary citizen of their policies, yeah. this idea of, of those NIST controls, that's going to help provide the transparency and visibility. So that's actually going to be a key part of being able to shorten the time to get well, to an ATO. Well that certainly accelerates the discovery Absolutely. piece, then you kind of understand what you have first, and then you attack it with automation, and exactly. everything seems more efficient. That's the goal, right? Yeah, well, I mean, so this is why, you know, the true believer, there's, there's, there's concrete you know, reality there, which yeah. is, 
you know, I can, I can demonstrate it, but I can, I can demonstrate in real time that I'm compliant all the time. Yeah. I mean, we've never really had that before, right? Yeah, it's awesome. Not to this extent. I mean, again, this wave is, is coming. Again, love, love the commentary. Again, public sector is very interesting. It's just being disrupted heavily and at a highly accelerated rate. You guys are doing a great job. Good to see you, Josh. Peter, great to see you. CUBE coverage here in Washington, D.C., bringing all the action, extracting the suit from noise. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>